please. Okay, so we researched the Magnus effect. Um, what the effect? The Mag Magnus effect. So, uh, I'll just go through these quick. The purpose um, to investigate the Magnus effect and see the difference between, like, see what happens when something is given a large backspin, um, backspin like angular acceleration. Um, so we, our hypothesis was that the large angular acceleration would cause um, the object, which in this case was two Dixie cuffs that we taped together, um, it would cause that object to move to upward. to like rise further than it would have. You know, the acceleration would counter um, the acceleration of gravity downward. Um, there's a few other hypotheses if you want to read those um, equipment. So here, oops, this is what it looked like. Pretty cool. <laughs> um, so basically, you can see from these diagrams, this sort of explains the Magnus effect. Um, Basically, as as it spins, the air, like the air that goes around it, um, will will gather behind here and it'll push. It'll let's see. So, so when it's, it's when it's back spinning, yeah. um, like I really like this diagram because when it's back spinning, it's pulling the air that's going over top of it down a little bit, and so it's giving it almost like a vector of force going up on it that direction. And so obviously that's going to have a little bit of an effect to like decrease gravity on it, and so to create lift on the object that's back spinning. Uh. Uh, so procedure. So here's we compare. What we did was we compared it to just like tossing a ball in the air, and here's what you would expect um, those graphs to look like. So you see position um, in the x and y direction is like you would expect. So here's, we don't need to watch that, that's just tossing the ball in the air. And then here's the graphs of position and velocity for the object that we... Um, they had the backspin. Yeah. So you can see position. Um, what's interesting, I think, is in the x direction, um, when, when you just toss the ball up, the velocity is always the same in the x direction, but here, it's obviously changing. And then in fact, right about the, there, right about there you see it's like a negative, it's a negative slope, so it's got a negative velocity um, in the x direction. And we'll show you the video again. Basically, as it reaches the top, it actually goes backwards in the x direction, which is And you can look at either, awesome. you can look at either one of these for the y direction, uh, whether you're looking at the slope of this here or that this is just zero, uh, that like, the yeah, force terminal. up on it, on the cup that's backspinning, uh, had to have been close to or almost equal to the force of gravity down on it because it's not accelerating downward. It had a constant yeah. velocity downward after it did the whole up thing and then came back down like that. So as it's coming down, it's at sort of like a terminal velocity. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I guess over time, the air resistance would eventually stop it from spinning. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's why uh, in the beginning it went up, and because the force created by the backspin, it was spinning a lot faster than right off the rubber band and everything, um, and that's why it went a lot faster, and it even went backwards a little bit before it started coming back down. Here's uh, the same one. Yeah, probably. You can just watch it again. <laughs> Yeah, it goes back. Yeah, and so it, you can see, like, it's not accelerating yeah, downward it, at all. It's just traveling in a straight it's got a constant line, constant velocity, constant velocity and everything. And I think it's interesting that it's sort of, um, if you look back here, it's got a constant um, negative velocity in the y direction and positive in the x direction, and they're almost, um, they're almost opposites of each other. Like, like they the would, same distance away from zero. They would be, yeah. So it's like. It's going downward at the same rate that it's going um, positively in the x direction, going, you know, away.
here's what here's what we showed you or what we said about. So this is throwing a ball, and this is with the backspin. Yeah. So it's obviously accelerating in the y direction because you can see the dots are differently spaced. But like here, it's all evenly spaced. And then I made this from the uh, I used like the tangent line function on the on Logger Pro. Um, I don't know if there's a better way to do that or not, but there's a much easier way to do it anyway. Really? Yeah. Well, it didn't. <laughs> I'll show you later. Okay. Well, anyway, so I, <laughs> I plugged this. I plugged these into an Excel thing, and I can show you that if you need proof. But you can see, like, let's see, the x direction is the red line. So it starts with a huge negative acceleration in the x direction. So like, as soon as it launches out. So it's like going really fast in the x direction, slowing down a ton in the x direction, goes backwards in the x direction. Yeah. That's the negative acceleration. And then y direction starts positive. Um, we could have maybe uh, looked at like jerk, I guess. Would that? Yeah. Would this be a good example to look at that? But we didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so and then you can see like. Here it eventually it eventually reaches zero. Yeah, they both this kind of approach zero after they do this whole funky beginning thing, which would be like the significant um, part to look at, is my guess. Yeah, I think. And and when the when the acceleration in the y direction, let's see, it reaches zero pretty quickly, and then what is it? What is this? It. Uh, Changes the direction. No, changes direction here, and then. What's the acceleration changing? Yeah. Well, one of our hypotheses was, was that the acceleration would not be constant um, because, like, as the force actually, we found that the force, the Magnus force, actually sort of changes as um, as it travels in the air. And See, it probably has something to do with the, this is the air resistance on the rotation of the cup. This is just the acceleration versus the, the, and the velocity graphs. So we found, uh, this is restating. So first we said we observed that um, had a greater velocity in the x direction and then a, great, a far greater acceleration negatively. So eventually the velocity in the y direction was greater. Um, what else? What was it? Yeah, so basically this acceleration in the y direction, um, which if you had just tossed a ball in the air, the acceleration is always constant downward in the y direction. And, and there's no acceleration in the x direction. I'll go back here. So like you start with a positive acceleration in the, in the y direction. And then here you actually the go back you on the computer. Show. Yeah, well, <laughs> right about there. Um, so that's what we observed during the ascension part as it reaches its max height. And then as it descends, um, velocity in the x and y direction is zero. Oh, at the highest point, it's zero. And the velocities in the x and y direction, like we said, are pretty much equal. They're close to equal. Yeah. Um, constant velocities, no acceleration. X and negative y direction, yeah. Um, and then, at first I was thinking, like, does that mean that it's in equilibrium because the force of gravity and the Magnus force are, are um, equal? But then I realized it's got a net torque, so it's not in equilibrium, but sort of, I guess? Well, you can say it's in translational equilibrium, but not rotational equilibrium. Okay. What he said. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then it does seem to reach a terminal velocity Though I would think that it would eventually the air resistance would cause the rotation to slow down. Yeah. And it would just it's okay, so do you want to read some of this? So we concluded that the Magnus force uh, caused it to go up initially, and then as it was going down, it pretty much just slowed gravity down to the point where it was equal to gravity and kept it going at a constant velocity. Um, and that the Magnus force changed during the course of the object's um, flight. Uh, it was a lot bigger at the beginning, 
when the rotational acceleration was a lot bigger and we're assuming that it was air friction that slowed down the rotation of it, making the magnets force smaller. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all it says. Cool, let's thank our speakers. Take some questions from the audience. Yeah. Uh, questions? <laughs> ben, go ahead. Uh, so you had, initially, when it was going up, it was accelerating upwards, right? Yeah. Um, so did you guys conclude that it had a force um, upwards that was greater than gravity initially? Because yeah. Because it was spinning? For, for, you know, an instant, yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know about the force it upwards being greater, but the force in the extra. No, the, mag the magnus force was, was greater than gravity, I would say. Let's go back in to the. the beginning, right? Yeah. In I the mean, beginning. the force was changing because it was slowing down. Go back look to at, the, look at the acceleration. acceleration. Yeah. Less interaction with the molecules. See. It's this one. Yeah. Yeah, your initial acceleration in the y direction is way one, positive. One thing that I yeah. think might be interesting is if you masked it. And then found the force from that. Yeah, we could do that, but, but we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you really just investigated Magnus accelerations, yeah. never Magnus forces. Yeah. But wouldn't the mass sort of like cancel out though? Because if we're looking at gravity versus the. Assuming you always have the same mass. Yeah. Mass isn't particularly yeah. relevant. It's a good counterattack. Well, you tried to explain to me your rubber band contraption, but I don't think I really... You know, make make I didn't know how to do it. Yeah, we don't have, to t have time to make one right now. It's okay, you have, well, two, yeah, you have two Dixie cups, okay. you turn them upside down, you put the bottoms of them together, and you okay. put a piece of tape around the center so that the bottoms are taped together. Okay. You take a rubber band, and you take the rubber band underneath and over the top of it, and then just kind of wind the rubber band around, and then when you release it, it'll rotate the cup this way because the rubber band's really pulling fast. on it. Yeah, okay. and so the cup will shoot forward and rotate right. and then it goes up. Yep, yeah, Steve. Uh, is the acceleration down ever greater than the acceleration of gravity? Oh. I don't think. Look at the scale. Here, so that's 50. Yeah. I guess, I guess it is. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Do so, you have an explanation for that? So what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's watch the video again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah, you can definitely tell at the top that was a lot faster than like if you would just. Because as it. it like as it sort of turns, so because the yeah. force, it seems like the force kind of changes direction at the top there. So this like, I'm guessing that this like, uh, if you imagine this deflected wig as a vector. I'm imagining that at the top, it like rotates around to the top side of it. Yeah, the force changes. So that the force on it is actually down. Yeah, the force, I think... Making it go faster than gravity. Yeah. I think like as it, as it rises, the force is kind of always changing direction. That's why the acceleration becomes less and less. And then eventually the force will like go in the opposite direction almost. And then it'll actually come back around. So like... At the end, the force is pointing back in the x direction. No. So would it be sort of like an electron through a field? I no. <laughs> <laughs> Iskander. Is it the <laughs> angular acceleration that causes uh, yeah. ma magnus force to be more than uh, the force of gravity? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the angular acceleration of it is what causes the air underneath the ball to spin. Uh, and to push on it up, so... Are you sure that's yeah. not the angular velocity? Is it the angular velocity or the angular acceleration that matters? I think it would be... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's acceleration because it's a force. Let's see. Is it the fact that it's spinning? Or is it the fact that the spinning rate is changing? Which I of those it's, matters? It's the fact that it's spinning, but when you change the rate that it's spinning at, it changes the force. Okay, so, all right. Yeah. So to answer Eskando's question, he was asking about accelerations. That would be changing the forces then, right? Yeah. 
not causing the forces but changing it? Yeah, so like we said in the conclusions, like the, we noticed that the force couldn't have been constant the entire time. Yeah. So because because the air friction and all that, um, the angular acceleration changes, so the force changes. Or the angular, yeah. And the angular velocity is what causes the Magnus force. Yeah. Anything else? Any other questions? I would like to go to that graph of the accelerations in X and Y. Yeah. I don't think it's a mistake that you didn't do it, but I'm really interested in the vector acceleration. It seems to me like the vector acceleration is relatively constant between 1 and 1.2 seconds, and then it, it begins plummeting at like 1.3 seconds and goes to zero, almost to zero. Okay. So, so you see where there's a, there's a big maximum in negative acceleration in X, and at that same time the acceleration in Y is zero. So you've got actually a really steady vector acceleration, changing direction of course, but not changing magnitude. So like your accelerations are pretty, pretty constant steady, so even like, yeah, even a little bit longer than that, another dot or two beyond that, and then it starts falling, excuse me, really dramatically, which is really interesting. I think, I think the thing is, the point where it reaches its, that must be the max height right there. Ah. And then, like as it reaches that max height. What I'm thinking, I think that the Magnus force changes direction, so that's why the accelerations switch. Yeah, when we looked at the video, how like the Magnus force switched direction on it and pushed it downwards until it's caught up again, that'd probably be where that happened. Yeah, pushed it down for a moment. Yep, 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 yep. That's consistent with that. And that's uh, that's like three G's down at the bottom of that blue line. Is that 30 meters per second squared? Mm -hmm. huh? That's three G's down. Woo! For a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's pretty significant for <laughs> Got another question? Which one are you about? What does blue and uh, red graph represent? Blue is the acceleration in the y direction, and red oh, is the what? acceleration in the x direction oh. of the cup that was spinning. Oh. Anything else? Carrington's got a question. Carrington. All right, so back in your background, um, you had a couple pictures displaying the forces. Well, you could kind of. I think it's. I think it's sort of like the air. After the ball passes through the air, the air tends to like will bend around it, and then it will. Yeah, but like the top part's going, like with the rotation, the top part is going with the wind, and the bottom part's going against the wind. And then we were also saying that was pressing here behind it, while with the spin. Now I was just wondering which one was like the main force driving behind the magnet. I think it's impressive. I think it's like these, I think it's this, this back here, all of that, if you would, if you were to sum that up, it would, it would look, you know, it'd be a force going, it'd be like a, it would point, it would point upward. What are you guys? Uh, okay. I was just going to say that this is really interesting because it seems really similar to the way that a wing, provi or, oh, sorry, a wing provides lift to a plane. Yeah, I was going to say that when yeah, I was that, talking about that. And <laughs> lift, yeah. it, it's the same way in the, in the fact that a wing provides lift because the air over the top moves faster than the air on the bottom. And that's just that is kind of really interesting. Yeah, there's also, there's more complicated like ways to, to look at it. I said it on here. Um, we found equations that had to do with air pressure and air density, and then there was also like vor vortexes and stuff. Which is these little circles behind there. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's the same so thing. So we, most, we mostly just looked at like the accelerations and the velocities, but you could, you could look at 
you could investigate like the different air pressure, all that stuff. What that has to do, what what would that would affect it? You know, Panky. We, I'm, I'm sorry, Spank, we'll have to do it some other time. We've got uh, 20 minutes there. Okay. <laughs> it's very good. Thank you, guys.